Here's a table of standard, standard derivatives. If we look at the top, we can see y or fx. So here's a table of standard derivatives. The function on the left-hand side, y or using the fx notation, it's a function with x as the independent variable. So this is the actual function over on the left-hand side that we're going to differentiate. These are the differentials on this side using the two notations, dy by dx or f prime x. And here they are. We're going to look at them. They're, these are the general ones that we use most often. These are the most common. There are others. This is the one I used in the example. The sine of ax turns out to be a cos ax. And that's saying that whatever constant is inside comes out and goes in front and the sine changes into a cosine. So that's all I use. I just use this table of differentials to actually rewrite the sine function as a cosine function because the differential is the cosine function. And here are some others. We probably won't be doing much with these. But if you're using the textbook to try different examples, well, then you might well come across these. Like everything else, the more you use them, the easier to get. And the difficulties I've pointed out already is not in the calculus. In these rules, it's the algebra that makes it difficult. So here's our table of standard derivatives. Have that in front of you. What we're going to do now is go through some examples of how we might use these things. And then you can have a go at some for yourself. So here are a few examples. I've tried to use different letters for the dependent and independent variables. And I've tried using the function in the two different ways we represent the function. So you can see how the notation works. So with the table to hand, the first one is an interesting one because um, it's a constant. S equals 4. S being the displacement function. So the displacement from my start position is 4 metres. It's a constant. It doesn't matter what's going on here. The displacement is always 4. And so it's not moving or it's moving in a circle, staying in a position of 4 metres from the start point, say. So if I were to plot a graph of this, I would end up with a straight line, a horizontal line. And the gradient of that line would be zero. It's just a line that goes through y at 4. So the differential of a constant is zero. If we look at our table, we haven't got a constant in there. So that's one that doesn't tend to appear in standard differential tables, so you might want to add it for your own use. If I've got just a constant, A, then the differential is zero. The differential of a constant is zero. If you look at the next, so the differential, and if I'm using S, so I don't know what the independent variable is in, in this case. So it's a bit of a weird example, but let's say it was x, the, d, the independent variable is x. Then it would be ds by dx equals zero. The differential is zero, in other words. The second one, y equals 3x. So the notation I'm going to use is the differential of y with respect to x is how I'm going to say it, dy by dx y and x because y is the dependent, x is the independent. And people often think of this as in this particular case, x disappears and I'm just left with 3. However, of course, there is some sense in this. If I were to draw this out on a graph, it would be a line, y equals 3x, it would be a linear line and the gradient of that line would be 3 because it's y equals 3x. Remember the equation of the line, y equals mx plus c, m is 3. So the gradient is 3. It tells you that. If um, I look at this, it's actually in this first rule. Oops, not there. I'm looking back here. It's in this first rule here. ax to the n. Where n is 1. If there's no power, it's 1. So what does this first rule tell me? If n, whatever n is, I take 1 off the power, and we'll look at more of these in a second. So 1 take away 1 is 0, and anything to the power of 0 is just 0. So in other words, it disappears and becomes just 1. So that's another way of ending up with this. 
but you might want to write down for your own use a particular example AX becomes just A whatever the variable is it disappears and you're left with the constant in front of it so if it's 3x 3 if it's 4x 4 if it's minus 6x minus 6 the x or the t whatever the independent variable is disappears and we're left with just the constant in front of it so they're two that people often get confused with because they don't specifically turn up on this table of standard derivatives <coughs> next example now we start getting into using our table so the first thing the notation is well I'm using the I bracket T notation for the function so for the differential I'm going to use I prime T the differential and then I use my table of differentials so let's have a look at how it works this is the rule that I'm applying here and if we look at it, what it's saying is, if we look at the original function and think of our example, what is our example? It's 4x, 4t squared. So think of our example, 4t squared. n is 2. And a is 4. What happens? n becomes n minus 1. This is what the rule is telling us. Whatever n is, I take one off it. So if it's 2, take one off 2, it's 1. And whatever n is, it comes down in front of the x and multiplies by whatever constant is in front. That's what the rule's telling us. So if n is 2, I bring that 2 down, multiply it by the 4, and I get 8. And then I take 1 off the power, so the answer's 8t. So you might want to put that in on your little thing as an example. Whatever the power is, you just bring it down, times it by the number in front, and take one off the power. That's the rule in words, if you like. And so, for this next one, I bring the 2 down, times it by the 4, to get 8. Take one off the power, squared, back to 1. So I don't need to put the power 1, I just put 8t. And that's the answer. So if I want to know what the gradient of that function is any time, I just let t equal 0.1 as we did, or 0.2, some value, I can work out the rate of change or the gradient. Let's look at the next one. So what's the notation going to be? Well, again, we've got a v bracket t, so the notation is going to be v prime t. So this is voltage function against time. And it's a cosine function, cosine wave this time, 8 cos, sorry, 4 cos 5t. So if we look back, we're using this one, the cos function. It doesn't tell us what we do if there's a number in front. Well, we just take that as red. If there's a number in front, say a 4 in this case, so the example we're looking at is 4 cos 5t, was it? 4 cos 5 5t, for example, you can put that in there if you like, 4 cos 5t. This doesn't say a constant in front, but the rule applies. It's just that whatever, what we're doing here is, if we look at it, whatever constant's inside, the a, comes out and goes in front and changes to negative. So we're going from 5 to minus 5, and then we just multiply that by whatever number happens to be in front. 4 in this case. It's not written here, but of course, in front of all of these is the number 1, isn't it? 1 lot of sine x, 1 lot of odd log x, 1 lot of e to the ax. So, in a, you know, it is there really, it's just not stated explicitly. So, I bring the 5 out, that's what this rule is telling me, put it in front, make it negative, and change the cosine to a sine. And then the rest stays the same. Look, AX stays as AX. So it just becomes minus 20 sine 5T. So now you can see why it's just a one-line answer. You just write down the answer once you know these tables. The so next one, N equals 100 e to the minus 3T. This is an example of, a, of an exponential decay function. This is our start value, 
100% of it, say. And this is a decaying um, investment over time. And this is telling me what I'm going to have left in my account after a certain number of times, say maybe if time was measured in years. And I want to know the rate at which I'm losing my money. And so I want to differentiate this function. It's not the n brackets t function, which it could have been. So in this case, I'm going to write the n by dt. <coughs> so what does it tell us to do this time? If we look back. I'm looking for this differential, this one. So we've got 100 e to the minus 3t was our example. If we look at the uh, function, the a, what happens? The a inside the constant comes down and goes in front. And the rest stays exactly the same. Look, e to the ax stays as e to the ax. The constant comes down and goes in front. And so minus 3 comes down and multiplies by the 100. So we have minus 3 hundred e to the minus 3t. So dn by dt equals minus 300 e to the minus 3t. One more. Y equals e to the x. Differential. Answer. Answer is e to the x. What is the constant in front of the x? It's 1. 1 lot of x. So 1 comes down and goes in front. This is the only function which is its own differential. So I just want to talk about that briefly for a second. Here is the y equals e to the x function. What it's saying is, and this is a particular function, this is a, this is a um, property of exponential functions. Exponential functions are one where the rate of change depends on how much you've got. We think about that for a minute. Populations. The rate of change of a population, the rate of growth of the number of rabbits or the number of humans, depends on how many humans there are. That makes sense. Ex uh, exponential decays, radioactive decays, the rate at which the material is decaying depends on how much you've got. And so there's many things in nature that behave exponentially. And the rate of change is given by the function. So y equals e to the x, if I want to know what's the gradient of this function at that point, it's the value of the function at that point, it's 2. What's the gradient at this point? It's the value of the function at that point. Four. So the exponential function, e to the x, the value of the function gives you its gradient. What's the gradient here? One. And so when the value becomes zero, what's the gradient at zero? Zero. So a special function, the exponential function. Now we need to look at some more examples, don't we? And it's just a case of having to go at some. But before we do that, I want to just apply these, uh, some of these two um, power functions like x squared or roots and things like that. And just think again about the laws of indices. So I'll just do that and then I'll let you go on and have a go at some.